in today's session of operating system we'll be moving on to the next topic which is related to disk scheduling in this session we'll cover the various algorithms that are required to understand how the disk requests are being processed so what is the order in which when you have multiple request in what order the disk request are being satisfied so moving on to the first algorithm as the name implies it is first come first serve so when you go for first come first serve you already know depending upon the order we get you go for performing the service of that request so here we already know that you have your disk which is a platter and it is divided into tracks and track is divided into a sector on which you actually store your data now here you are being given a disk and you have 180 tracks and the track numbers are being numbered from 0 to 1 uh, 179 so when you want to represent it here it is not compulsory that you represent all the numbers from 0 to 179 randomly you can represent the numbers and that is based on the request so these are the request so this is 180 tracks and these are the request which are been uh, given for accessing the disk so track number 81 track number 110 so this is the order in which you need to access and in order to either read the data or write the data what you require you read you require a read write head and the initial position of your read write head is at track number 45 and since it is at 49 45 this numbers whatever numbers we are representing they are to be represented randomly or based on the request whatever you are having here so in my initial head is at 45 so what is the first request i got when you see this it is 81 so from 45 your read write head will make a movement to 81 and then what is the next request we have here 110 so after 81 it moves a uh, the disk the read write head will move on to 110 and after 110 what is your next request it is 38 so it comes back to 38 track then it moves to 156 so from 38 it is going to 156 and 156 it is going to 68 because my second request next request is 68 from 68 it moves to 172 172 to 92 and 9 finally to 10 so this is the order in which your request are been satisfied now when you are performing this operation we have to calculate the total head movements or we even call this as a seek time so the amount of time required to perform this operations so when you see your first request so what was your first request where was your initial head present at 45 and what was your next request 81 so you just go for subtracting these values so you can call this as a source and this as a destination so the subtraction can be either source minus destination or it can be destination minus source so you can take any of the values so since 81 is a larger value i'm going for subtracting 81 minus 45 right now after 81 so we could calculate 45 and 81 so after 81 what is your next request here 110 so you consider these two values so one becomes your source the other becomes your destination so it is 110 minus 81 plus so what is your next request here you are at 110 and what is your next request 38 so it is 110 minus 38 so this is your next value now coming to your next request you are at 38 and you are moving to 156 right so here it is 156 minus 38 next you are at 156 you are making a move to 68 so when you are at 156 and making a move to 68 the value that is calculated at this point is 156 minus 68 now you are at 68 you are making a move to 172 so it is 172 minus 68 now you are at 172 the calculation would be 92 and making a move to 92 right ma so 172 minus 98 and the last one would be 92 minus 10 so this is how you calculate your total head movements or you even call it as seek time so you after you subtract each individual value source minus destination or destination minus source you sum up the individual values and that will give you the seek time so in fcfs you are not uh, you are not dealing anything so because you are just taking the first value and performing the operation so implementation is very easy and there is no chance of starvation why because as soon as you are getting a request it is been processed so request is service based on your time so there is no starvation but when you calculate your seek time 
compared to the other algorithm seek time increases and it is not very much efficient because we are not taking any priority or any considerations here now we'll move on to the next disk scheduling algorithm which is nothing but shortest seek time first sstf stands for shortest shortest because we are calculating based on your seek time so it is seek time first f stands for your first so you in the examination you will be a giving a question like this so 180 tracks number from 0 to 179 and this is the order of your request so and your initial head position will also be specified and if your initial head position is not being specified you randomly take one initial head position and start tracing the algorithm so you are at 45 so when you are at 45 initially in fcfs we have gone to 87 but here what is that you need to do here which of the requests will be satisfied so you just subtract these values 45 minus 87 what is the value 45 minus 110 what is the value 45 minus 50 so when you just check it 45 minus 172 45 minus 67 45 minus 156 so out of all these values you calculate it for all so what would be the minimum uh, subtracted value that you go for it so 45 minus 50 you are getting a uh, value of 5 so you start your movement from 45 to 50 now you are at 50 so from 50 you again check from you are at 50 now so from 50 you have all the options so which particular head movement will take less time so obviously moving from 50 to 39 will take less amount of time and you are at 39 then you again calculate from 39 what are the remaining values which will take the less amount of time 39 minus 87 39 minus 110 so 39 minus 15 is giving you less time so from 15 again you calculate the subtraction values and you go on tracing the remaining values so in all these things here you calculate the seek time if you are at a particular track you calculate what is the minimum value when you are subtracting your next track value so when you are doing this operation whichever value is giving you the minimum you make your head movement to move in that particular position so this is your shortest seek time first and as i told you the calculations will be now you consider these two values 45 minus 50 so the value would be 50 minus 45 you are at 50 and the next value is 39 so it is 50 minus 39 next 39 and 15 it is 39 minus 15 so two two values you sum uh, you take two two values and calculate the seek time now when you are going for sstf in this algorithm the disk response time is very less and it is very efficient than fcfs because we are checking the shortest seek time and then performing the operation less speed of algorithm execution because for every moment i need to calculate the seek time and then perform the operation here you can have starvation why because based on the less amount of seek time you are performing the operation next you have your scan uh, next uh, the disk scheduling algorithm would be your scan the main difference between your sstf and scan here is you either move to one direction you don't check your seek time or any time you either move to your left left part of it or you either move to your right part of it so that can be either uh, there is no restriction that you have to only move to your left side or right side you can move to any of your side and you have your tracks number from 0 to 179 in random order so your read write head is at 49 so you are since you are moving to your left side you identify what are all the values that will be coming on to your left side so what you will be getting 40 10 so you move to your last uh, starting position so you are at 45 you could cover 40 requests 10 requests and move to your last starting point if i am moving to your right side assume from 45 if i have made a movement to your right side you need to go till 178 so you have to go to 178 and then come back to your starting position so after you have reached the starting point here you go for performing the request operation in the right side so when you are moving to your right side so you are at zero you are moving gradually to your right side so you identify whether there are any request in that particular order you have these values right 50 65 75 if you are getting any of the request in this particular order you service them so this you call it as a scan so scan disk scheduling is also known as elevator so you will your lift will be moving up to down and in between if you are getting any of the passengers you accommodate right similarly when you are moving in one direction 
if any of the disk request is present in that particular path you try to service it coming to the advantages and disadvantages we you have some amount of waiting time here starvation can be avoided and if your request is present after your final head moment you will not be able to service that that will see in the next algorithm now when i go for the next uh, algorithm here it is c scan so c scan stands for your circular scan so when you go for your circular scan algorithm here as we have seen in the previous case we have gone to your left side right now we'll move on to your right side so you start at 45 perform all the request present in your right side but you will you will be reaching till the end so what is your end operation here 179 so you reach till your end part and when you are moving back to your left side you don't service so this you are just moving your head but you will not service anything again start at your starting point and start servicing the requests which are present in on to your left side of these values so 10 and 20 will be serviced in the second time so first you are moving to your right side coming back again to your starting position and performing the operation so calculation of your head moment is same so 50 minus 45 65 minus 50 75 minus 65 so this would be your calculations so now when you see this 179 179 to 0 you are not performing any operation so that also to be calculated as 179 minus 0 then you again start from 10 minus 0 and 40 minus 10 so that would be your seek time so circular time it gives a uniform waiting time for all your operations better response time you have here and it is an improved version of your scan algorithm but here if no request uh, is remains to be serviced the uh, uh, no request will be serviced in the middle because the head will be traveling to the end of the disk and then go for servicing the request in that order now the next algorithm which we have here is uh, look disk scheduling algorithm so when you go for look uh, disk scheduling algorithm what we were doing even if you don't have your request even if my last track is at 170 i was making a move to 179 and here my starting request is at 10 but my head was head moment was still zero so that will not be happening in case of your look uh, disk scheduling algorithms where your head moment will be stopped only at your last request so look is similar to that of your scan algorithm except that moving you will not be moved till the end you will not move to your end in scan you will move to your end but in look you only move to your last request value so instead of moving to 179 here we'll move only to 170 because 170 is my last request value so you start in one direction so here i've started with right side direction come back so when you are coming back you try to identify what are the requests that are present in that particular direction and service them now coming to your next algorithm here which is c look disk scheduling algorithm same so what you were doing in is this is same as your c scan algorithm where when you are coming back to a particular or request when you are coming back to your starting you will not service any of the request in that particular order and here we have to take it that we are not going beyond the end of the request so what is my end of the request here 170 so beyond that you will not be moving so you traverse in one direction reach to your end of the request and after reaching to the end of the request you again come back and service the remaining values so when you are seeing this it is a better performance compared to your look scheduling algorithms and uh, the uh, the only problem whether you go for look algorithm or uh, whether you go for your c look algorithm or uh, look algorithm is nothing but you have to find out what is your end request only then you will be able to know what operations you can do now then having seen the disk scheduling algorithm now we'll move on to the next one which is disk management so how do you actually manage your disk so what are the operations i need to perform in one is disk formatting the other is booting from the disk and bad block recovery so when i go for disk formatting so you can either do it at physical level or you call it as low level or you can even go for logical level formatting or high level formatting 
physical formatting or low level formatting will not be done by the user it will be done before a machine is delivered whether it is a laptop or a desktop before it is delivered to the machine the physical formatting will be done whereas the logical formatting will be done by the user after he gets the system so when you go for your uh, physical formatting what happens is you will a disk will be present right so this will be first divided into tracks and tracks will be divided into sectors and in each of the sector they'll go for storing a data structure and this particular data structure will contain three fields one is your header value other is your data area the other is your trailer value so when you go for your header and trailer value we go for storing sector number and you go for error correcting code ecc so whenever you want to perform so who will perform the read write operation read or write head will do it right so whenever you want to perform a read operation your ecc will be recalculated and when you want to perform your write operation the ecc value will be updated so whenever an operation is done read operation you calculate your ecc value if the updated value and the recalculated value is same you perform the operation of your read now the next one we have here is boot block now we might be uh, you might have heard a word about booting so what is this booting here booting here is nothing but you have a program known as bootstrap loader right so this bootstrap loader will contain all the necessary instructions which are required for loading your operating system onto your main memory so the process of loading your operating system onto the memory is nothing but your booting for that you require a set of operations that we call it as a bootstrap loader or we call it as a boot code so to perform these operations with the disk will be normally divided into partitions and when you go for this boot block so boot block or you call it as a boot sector this contains a set of operations which are required for loading as i told you or uh, which are required for loading your operating system onto your main memory so when you want to perform this the boot block contains three particular operations one is components one is your master boot record mbr boot code actual instruction and this partition table which will help you to identify which will help you to identify which partition is active in order to get the operating system so mbr will contain the boot code as well as the partition table and this is the actual code where it is present now when you go for your bad block so when you have gone for this bad blocks you may be having a block which is of because of physical damage the data in it is uh, damaged or it is not error error it is erroneous data which is present on this so how do you go for handling them you can handle them manually so you run a program and check which of the blocks are bad and you try to log them so next time when you want to store the data you don't store the data onto the bad blocks and the next one you have here is sector sparing so what you do is when you find a bad block here whatever data you have that you store it onto your spare block and sector spilling is nothing but assume you have identified that 17th block is a bad block and you are able to identify somewhere at 2 to not 2 this particular sector is spare so what you do is you start dumping the data from 201 you dump the data into 202 200 data into 201 so like that so what will happen your 17th data will be dumped on to your 18th data so because 18th uh, sector data will be moved on to 19 so you go on split, uh, slipping the data so you move the data from one particular sector to the other sector we'll move on to the next topic in the next class